Uh, may we also invite on stage uh, Mr. Kulin Patel, CEO and partner K.A. Pandit India, who is a qualified actuary with over 27 years of varied industry experience across full value chain, actuarial design, regulatory administration, employee communications and trust governance consulting as the guest speaker for the session. May we please have a big round of applause. is a very important topic which can create problems within India's federal structure and potentially damage sovereign ratings of the country. If you come for that purpose, you are in the right to. If you know that this paper has been awarded the best paper of the 2013 year and you have come to take away the scholastic inputs from this paper. It is available here and you are also in the right. A copy of the compendium is available for taking after this session. If you think that we can Lost are those who just stayed at home. So if you want to get out of this OPS into the right destination to understand what is in Kuleen's mind, we are all in the right room. And just because we can't translate this into English, we'll go back to the Manzil to Mile ki Phatakki ki sahi. Umra to wo hai, jo ghar se hai. Phatakna zaruri hai, aur sahi bhatakna zaruri hai. Aur kis tarah se sahi bhatke? <laughs> no, you know, we should say like Baba, I mean, how can I call it after that? <laughs> <laughs> um, um, so I'm going to take you on a journey. I know I've got about 20 minutes and um, hopefully I can tell you a little bit of a story, a little bit of trailer to the paper. Okay, I cannot go through the whole paper as Mayu said it's there, but let me try and tell you a story. Uh, we've seen in the last 18 months what can happen, what we've seen in the news. And this is how I've been feeling. Every time I read a headline of OPS, which government, what they're thinking and what they're doing. Okay. But you can't just stick with that. You can't just feel bad. So I went on a journey of trying to discover what else, what can we do, what can I think? There's no silver bullet, but can I start something? Can we maybe collectively use this as maybe just some thought-provoking ideas? So take the paper, take my quick trailer in that spirit. There's lots of things that can be done better, evolved, a lot more scientific and all of that in future. But uh, I got really inspired even further to actually do something thanks to the RBI. If none of you have read this, forget my paper view. One paper you must read is the RBI paper that came out in September absolutely phenomenal. Um, it has taken a whole set of all the employees in all the state governments and tried to model out what it will mean for the country. And I will leave you just with one number that I took away. If all the people went back to OPS, the cumulative discounted cash flow from that move will be four and a half times the size that it would be if it was in CPS stroke and uh, At least that's one statistic takeaway, and that's the graph that shows that across the different states. So then it was like, okay, and then they've got sort of sensitivity analysis and all that. 
Um, so I then naturally ask myself a few questions. What if? What would it be? I don't know. We all think, oh yeah, it's going to be terrible, and you know, but how much terrible? How much is this gap that we need to bridge? Right? So the first question I thought is, okay, let's go at it from a non-cash flow, but more actuarial approach in terms of collecting the cash flows. So I thought a natural thing is, let me start with just a simple person joining at the age of 20, 25, 30, 35. So right now. is the actual proxy of the state government MAVs that they are actually earning. Of course, evolution will happen. You need to build much better models to project forward. But if we at least for now, as a principle, start that as a premise, uh, then we then model you know, a normal distribution accordingly. Focusing on the median. The recommended contribution rate or estimated contribution rate for a 20-year-old if we went median performance that they've actually achieved in the government, state government NPS funds, we're looking at 59% per annum of basic plus PA is what it's coming out of. 25 is not much different, of course, is about six. So 60% is like the median. So how did I feel when I saw that? This was a discovery. I felt like this. I was like, Are <laughs> I thought maybe it might be a little closer. <laughs> so I was like, okay, what else? What can we do? We can't change the contribution rates overnight. That's not easy. Obviously, it's not going to happen, right? Just like that. You can't change necessarily the structure of OPS. That's too easy. Go, everyone will theoretically say change your accrual rate, change the... Well, that, I mean, not easy. So how do I extract value with as minimal changes as possible, not saying that they're not changing, but as minimal possible in the NPS portion. Let's get the best bang for the buck. So I asked myself a few other questions. So the first thing I did was say, the, let's now get the baseline. Let's look at it from an income point of view. If I reach 60, this is the pension I'll get under OPS, and this is, could be for somebody, what is the projected income from the NPS. So then I went on that little journey, and I'll show you that in a minute. The second thing then I said is, let's see if we can tweak something. The first thing I tweaked was use an example to say if we tweak the investment pattern pre-retirement in NPS for the state government employees. Then the third question was that if that's still not enough, then what else can I do? What could we do? Well, that's then when the little bit of disruption could happen. And I'll explain that a little later um, as we go, th go through very quickly. So let me start off with the first question. Um, and if I can just quickly have the zoom in there. Um, to do, obviously, any income projection, I need to you know, project out the accumulated balances at retirement. Uh, so again, using that 20-year-old, using the median performance and the distribution of the performance, I said, let's take the median balance at age 60. The, the numbers aren't important, really, in the paper. It's more the pattern and what it can do. Um, so if I take the median on the right-hand side, so I first projected, I've got a balance, a median balance at retirement at 60. Now something's going to happen. We first have the opiates. Now, that's nothing to do with the balance, obviously, the defined benefit bit. For all the details on what OPS is and all of that stuff, it's in the back of the paper, and it's all online. Um, that's the, how the income stream will look under an OPS retiree. The big reason for the big spike is the dearness allowance or the dearness relief in payment. So that's why the big hump and then comes down. The reason it goes up and down and not continues up is because it's decrement weighted. Now let's look at that median balance and what it would do today. 
if we converted using the fixed annuity, using the uh, Protean websites with all the insurance companies quoting live as on 13th December, I think it was, and we're down at that. 60% versus 24%, I kind of expected this stream. So what can we do? The first thing was pre-retirement allocation change of the investments. About 18 months ago, I think it was, the central government has allowed its employees to now choose even other options. So they're allowed to choose the life cycle option, the 50% one and the 25% one, the balanced and the conservative approach to pre-retirement. But of course, the reality is that no one really has in the government. They've gone, carried on. But what if they did? So I thought, ah, this is quite good, 50%. Up until the time you're age 35, I could be in equities as a government officer. Oh, that'd be quite good, because otherwise it's all government bonds and state bonds. So I thought, yeah, that might be. But I got this. I got the yellow line. <laughs> uh, that kind of caused me a bit of a surprise. <laughs> It wasn't much. I was really surprised at that. So then it was like, what else? Now I've done the pre-allocation, what else can I do? So now it was like, okay, I've done the investment allocation because the government's not necessarily going to let everyone free for all in the government sector go to 75% equities and all of that. So there's got to be something else. So the next thing was... What's happening and what's happened over in quite a few of the countries who have got much more mature defined contribution markets is the systemic withdrawal, I think we've called it here, or income drawdown. Many of you in the room I know work every day on overseas retirement pension plans. So though, let me just sort of pretend if I take this forward a little bit and see what I get. So what I've done is that with that balance, I've used an approach that essentially divides out by the expected lifetime each year you move on, right? So your money never runs out, which is, of course, very important uh, for government offices especially. Um, they don't want to be taking a lot of decisions and having to get a lot of advice, but at least there is a much more sort of, you know, calculated, transparent, and consistent way of doing some of the calculations. Now, if anyone wants to go into the techniques and different things on income drawdown... 23rd of January, it was fantastic tech talk organized by Chitra and the group at the advisory group on pensions. Watch a recording of that and you'll get a lot more detail. But for now, I'm sure you want to see what the shape looks like. Can anyone guess? Just shout out. I'll give it five seconds. I know I've only got 10 minutes more. Any guesses what it might look like? So you've got your balance and I'm now just going to divide out by the expectation of life at 60 for the first year's income. Second year's income is the remaining balance with a median rate of return and then divided by the expectation of life at 61. The investment pattern has been updated a little bit, just to give you a little clue, and that is life cycle 50 under the NPS that I've been describing. You go up to 35 years of age with 50% of an equity, and then there's like 20% in the government bonds and 30% in the corporate, and then year on year. So what I did for this is you can't have income drawdown or systematic withdrawal at the age of 60, where in that particular pattern at retirement, you're only 5% in equity. I mean, it kind of defeats the purpose. <laughs> so what I've done is I've simply shifted the life cycle 50 from 35 reducing down to age 50 and reducing down, right? Um, and what you get is, and that's why I've called it modified 50 in the paper, and you get that. I was a lot more optimistic, a lot more optimistic. It's not the silver bullet. It's not what we would want where it fills the gap and it's done. But I think it's a great improvement and a great start, fantastic start. So for this, for the concept and the principle, I, everything is like in full gross. Um, so, this, so that the principle can be shown. Then obviously that's one of the refinements you take and what value for commutation, non-commutation um, is there. Uh, so that's what we, shape we're looking for.
but still it's not there. Um, so then it was like, okay, well, the RBI had assumed 12% salary growth. That is, in reality, what's been happening. I'm, I know that from personal experience. And I, RBI has obviously done the studies to set that assumption. Um, so we've done it. However, just sort of for the sake of completeness on the paper, it does change the story slightly if you go with 8% salary growth. Um, not going to say that that's necessarily going to happen. So the pink line is the OPS. And then you've got what NPS would be. So the gap's still there. Relatively, it's the same sort of gap. Um, just to see this final sort of couple of slides, this is the cumulative version of the previous graph. Explains it a lot better. So you've got OPS, current NPS. You've got your pre-retirement change. You've then got the life cycle modified with income drawdown. And it was still not enough. But still now, from only being 25% of OPS in the dark blue, which is N, uh, existing NPS, at least I've doubled it almost, without really doing much. But there's still a gap. So now we're going to have to come down. So I'm not saying that it's going to be easy. I'm not saying that that's what can happen. But just for academic purposes, I said, okay, rather than the 66th formula that the OPS has, with a maximum of up to then 50%, um, let's change it to 75th, bring it down, straight ratio, no big science in that. But the big kicker, I thought, was this dearness relief. So rather than just an unlimited dearness relief, RBI had assumed 6%. I said, you know, what about that age-old concept of inflation capped at something? So again, for the sake of the paper, RBI long-term inflation assumptions in the very long term for India, 4%. Let's cap it. Still, a, you know, you get inflation, but cap it at 4 bit better, bit better, Yellow, blue line, at least you're in the realm of possibly having discussions with government unions and people like that to see if there's something else. But of course, it's not the silver bullet, it's not everything, but hopefully it's a foundation. So um, if I can go to the zoom in on the middle right-hand slide, please. Uh, no, um, the one in the middle, the one with the lady looking out there. Can you just zoom in? Yeah. Um, so what else? Well, I, we didn't do this for the paper because uh, I'm not convinced the concept necessarily with a line with, our, with the government employees' uh, cultural thought processes. I don't think it necessarily will always work, but I thought I'd refer to it, which is the longevity pooling and the risk sharing of mortality experience between a cohort of retirees in older age. Again, if you want more details on this, I've referred to it in the tech talk, and there's a lot of material out there and references that I've put in the paper. But essentially, it's a concept, an age-old concept, that scholars in this area around the world in the last five to seven years have evolved in terms of can a group of retirees share the mortality experience um, and sort of you know, benefit from that by getting longevity credits as they survive. But the big kicker, as I said, why I think it won't work necessarily in India is that in order to have this pool arrangement, the one big thing each member has to do is sign up to forfeit their balance back to the pool once you know, and if they pass away. And so that, you know, the value of that pool will only work to the extent that people are willing to give up. You know, there are many variations, but that, that you only give up part of it or you do a little bit of slice and dice, but then it sort of it reduces the value of the pool. The other thing is the bigger the pool, and we're talking hundreds of thousands of employees here, actually the delta incremental value is very small. I spoke to, you know, I've been involved in one of the researches from the SOA, re-speaking again to the authors in December, he kind of led me to believe that, yeah, the ones you really get large for a country like India, the incremental value of this might not be so much. Um, so just something more to research, though. Um, so we thought, you know, and things are going on around the world with collective defined contribution schemes, DB risk-sharing type schemes, targeting schemes. They're all happening. We now need to investigate further if the government is ready to think about these things and disrupt a little bit that we get a sustainable system and yet promise what
people want and the employees want. So just to close really off, if I can have the very last slide, um, I just it's an appeal. Read the paper. Someone needs to take this on, with or without me or a few others, to say what more we can refine, what more detail we can go into. Let's shout about it. Let's go and speak with the four uh, member committee that's uh, been formed by the finance minister. Uh, they're in the process of evaluating whether they essentially will give some kind of hybrid guaranteed 50% scheme. They've already announced it in Andhra Pradesh late last year. But they're basing that guarantee from all my reading and knowledge on the existing NPS. They're not going to change anything. So if we can help even the state finances by just shifting up the NPS graph a little bit, then at least the cost to us and the cost to the taxpayer and the state is that much less. And then bringing the OPS graph down, that's a different ballgame. But maybe one over a period of time that we can uh, do. And separately and finally, hopefully some of these things might then elude and apply themselves to the core NPS for the rest of the population. So with that, I'm done. Happy to take questions. Hopefully that's not too uh, late in the time. And thank you, everybody, and enjoy the reading of it. retirement after receiving pension is the maximum impact which comes to the government's exchequers. If the government is just able to probably guarantee only the salary at the time of retirement, you know, that gap between NPS and the, you know, the, yeah. okay. right. So I think it's, uh, I think it's still lower. Yeah, so if, if everyone got what Chitra was saying about that the big component is the post-retirement inflationary D, DAR or DA, whatever you want to call it, increases. So I think that is where it showed on that cumulative graph that the red went down to the blue and you then literally by just rather than a 6%, we're saying a capped 4%, we brought it down by a good sort of 40%. Um, and that's simple math, 2% per annum for about 20 years life span if not longer with the spouse's pension included at least that can be a target um, you know and that's not a necessary promise but a target and at least you bridge the gap my whole concept originally was just what is there that we can just help just bridge it a little bit to get the conversation going right now the gap is so hard that everyone's just going to put a, a, a sort of stick in the sand and just stick to their position and you know how can we maybe facilitate it coming together a little bit more This way. No, you're okay. So we have time for another three minutes, maybe a question or two. Basket for uh, calculating DA for a retired employee can change, right? So, because at present the DA, cal DA calculation which is made is for entire group, right? Whether it's working or non-working. So, basket uh, for calculating DA for a retired employee, if it is changed, then the inflation would be much so lower. My, my suggestion would be, you know, so once uh, probably at the time of retirement, because currently it's just contribution to NPS and whatever the fund is there in NPS, you give a pension, right? So instead, if, they go, if there is a gap between uh, what is there in the fund plus what he gets at the time of retirement, if the state government can guarantee that and stop at that and not probably, uh, you know, provide additional DA post-retirement. So that is totally workable, is my view. Okay, thank you. I think great session and uh, good feedback. Uh, one more area that you may like to uh, look at is money illusion is a very powerful indicator. And when we look at all those options that were on a discounted basis, so if we were to say that if you survive for 15 years after retirement, you get this lump sum, 
and uh, the look becomes very different. As an example, uh, we, uh, in the professional circuit, we did something on a pension buyout where the money illusion really, in terms of behavioral aspects, worked very well for the uptake of the uh, pension yeah, yeah. buyout. Yeah. So something like that could also be important. Yeah, because the de-risking, the, yeah. uh, all of that, the positioning of yeah. the value money illusion is yes. powerful to position all of this, and that's yeah. what we need to help and guide yeah, them. Yeah. Yeah. I think design is as important as just the discounted cash flows. Yeah. So Absolutely. with that, we can bring the session to a close. Yeah. Uh, do remember, this is available here in case you want to read the paper. It's uh, a very good work which is well researched and uh, I should uh, repeat that this paper was awarded the best paper of the 23rd GCA. Thank you, Colleen. Uh, thank, you for the uh, thank you for the excellent session by uh, our speaker. And I'd like to call upon uh, Mr. Kunj Maheshwari to please present the memento to the chair and the speaker, please. Can we have a big round of applause? Thank you. Can we have a round of applause, please?